Good evening. My name is Leon Jones, and I am giving a presentation for HTM 173 Introduction to Tourism Management. My professor is Leping Akai, PhD. And in this presentation, I'm going to break it down into three different areas here in the tourism industry. First, I'm going to talk about the issues in the tourism industry. Second, I'm going to talk about the current trends in the tourism industry. And third, I'm going to present the future of the tourism industry. So without further ado, let me start the presentation. Once again, my name is Leon Jones. I'm a student at Purdue University and I'm doing a presentation for HTM 173, Introduction to Tourism Management. And I'm gonna be talking about current trends and issues in the tourism industry. Now, when we talk about the industry itself, I find that it's fast changing and also tourism is not a single discipline, but it's connected to many other aspects of life like politics, entertainment, and it even features some areas in hospitality like hotels and restaurants. Also, many factors are involved because of the diversity of the tourism industry. And when it comes to traveling, many of us have a motive to travel. Now, first issue that I'm gonna talk about within the tourism industry is gonna be marketing. And I'm gonna go into the aspects of legal, human resources, operations, and legal affairs. The reason why I chose these issues is because all of them connect because when it comes to tourism, which is also hospitality, the job of anybody in the tourism industry is to make sure that you take care of your guests. So the issues that I'm going to break down are marketing, legal, human resources, operations, and legal affairs. So the first issue is marketing. And with marketing, marketing is an area that you have to keep up with every time in this industry because number one, there are always demographics that are changing. With COVID, people's behavior and vacation patterns have changed. Then there's market segmentation. Also, we have frequent guest programs. And then with the segmentation of the fast food industry, a lot of maturation has taken place. And then there is consolidation in the commercial lodging industry. Now, to round all that up, because this industry is constantly changing, you have to continue to build a better market for yourself because within tourism, there's a lot of competition. There are facilities that are coming in and they're going out. Again, you're looking for guest satisfaction. Number two, let's talk about the legal issues. Liquor liability. Now, my opinion about liquor liability is who to serve. Are you going to be liable if you're serving somebody who is under the drinking age? Within the tourism industry, are you ethical? Now, when it comes to franchise contract issues, we basically deal with the facilities like restaurants and hotels. Now, a number of your hotels are basically 
managed by management companies, but they're franchised by big companies. So you don't see a lot of corporate entities when it comes to hotels around. Now, I say that because if a number of you are traveling, you may find a Holiday Inn one month and then it's Baymont Suites the next month because the franchises are constantly changing. Then you have regulatory and labor compliance. Also, you have to worry about corporate governance, lack of proper insurance coverage, increasing cost of development and renovations. Thirdly, an issue that I see, and this is very big when it comes to any organization, but it's particularly, particularly bigger with tourism. Now, I say that because I will tell you from my experience of working in the tourism industry and in the hospitality industry, years ago, I saw a lot of turnover. Now, turnover is due to the hours you have to work. There are entities that have bad management. You have to deal with pay and compensation. And I will tell you, for the most part, a number of these jobs that you get in any of the areas of hospitality, they're made for teenagers. Now, as an adult, you can work in a visitor center, in my humble opinion, that's part of tourism. You can also work as a travel agent, although you can book a lot of your travel online now. And when it comes to employee morale, in this industry, because you have bad management, you have a lack of morale. So what happens is when you have guests and you have bad employees, the guests aren't going to be satisfied because the employees don't want to do their job. And if the, the employees don't want to do their jobs, what happens is your company is going to have a bad reputation. And another aspect that I see within the tourism industry is the culture and ethics. Now, for the most part, I don't talk about the culture as different ethnicities. I talk about the culture between generations, and here's why. It used to be when you worked in the hospitality or tourism industry, you didn't need education. You came in, you worked your way to the top, and you're a manager. Now, you have two different generations. The older generation worked their way from the bottom up. The newer generation has come in and gotten a degree and they've become managers. Now, the problem I have with that is the individual with the degree or the education doesn't have enough experience. And now you have the individual with all the experience, but they really lack any education. And if you have a mix of both, you're gonna understand the remnants of the job and you're going to understand the administrative or the business part of the job. You see, rounding everything off when it comes to human resources issues, and the reason why it is very important is because when we deal with human resources, for the most part, that is the lifeblood of any industry or company because they're the ones who write the safety policies. They're the ones who write the employee policies. Now, within the issues, again, I find there is sexual harassment, employee turnover, pay and compensation, lack of employee empowerment, lack of satisfaction of morale, culture and ethics. And when it comes to promotions, you can't go anywhere if there are no openings, however, if you have skills, there are not enough people to really train you. See, in this industry, it's on the job training. And you have to have the individuals in place who are willing to train their employees. Now, operations issues. 
That's also a problem. And why do I say that? Because here in 2021, the human being is being replaced by automation. Now, I understand why it's happening, because automation cuts down the cost of labor. However, automation is not personal or personable. And when it comes to the tourism industry, part of guest satisfaction is to interact with a human being. Let me give you an example. Have you ever called a company and all you could do is talk to a machine or a menu? That can be very frustrating. And sometimes automation doesn't work. However, we see that automation is taking place in this industry so we can keep the labor costs down. And we run into smoking and non-smoking areas. For the most part, many of the smokers have their designated places. And I know smokers do want to smoke in the rooms. However, a problem with smoking, it is bad for your health. You can get lung cancer. And many of us do not like the smell of smoke around us because I believe smoking is a very bad habit. And to me, talking about a real health issue, a public health issue, smoking, and you have a number of people who are chain smokers and they don't wanna quit. This is why they have their own designated places. And also sanitation, trash, what we talk about sanitation in public health. Now, when it comes to operations issues, you have a number of people who are in and out of the tourism industry. So what do we do about public health? What do we do about sanitation? Uh, those are issues. Because if you have improper sanitation, like improper food handling, there's a chance that somebody could get sick. So that moves on to the next issue I see, we want to go green. So there is a lot of waste in this industry. And I'm basically talking about the boxes that you get your souvenirs in or the packaging. If you eat at a restaurant, a lot of food gets thrown out. If you are shopping, what do you do with your shopping bags? Those are items that we can recycle because recycling actually keeps waste very lean. And in manufacturing, there's a term called lean production. You want to minimize waste and recycling does that job. And Booking and revenue challenges. When it comes to tourism, tourism is a competitive field. Sometimes you have to work with seasons. So how do you combat the seasonality? Are you going to tour as a group? Where are you going to go tour? Because there are many areas of the United States where it gets cold in the winter. Now, it's still warm in what we call the Rust Belt. Some areas in Texas and Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Florida. That's good. Now, there are some areas in Colorado, Pennsylvania, Michigan, where individuals enjoy skiing. But from my experience working in the hospitality and tourism industry, the warm weather climate is your peak season. And really what's hampered everything in the tourism industry has been COVID-19. And the big question dealing with COVID, are you vaccinated? Are you not vaccinated? Because the government is mandating that some employers who have a hundred employees or more 
require their employees to be vaccinated. Now, something that you must understand, in this country, we're dealing with tourism here, okay? How many people or foreigners have been vaccinated? Can we verify who's been vaccinated? There are reports that state that vaccinations don't work. There are people who haven't gotten vaccinated for religious reasons. However, when we sum everything up, the main reason why we have these issues in the tourism industry now is because of COVID-19. Number of industries had to shut down. And when they shut down, they've lost money. Now they're trying to recoup everything by raising the prices of everything. And when you raise the price of products, what happens? You are going to have individuals that are going to rely on shorter trips. And that'll be coming up in this presentation as well. So overall, when it comes to the issues that I see, I find that you have them in marketing, legal, human resources, operations, and of course, legal affairs. Now, let me go back over that again. A lot of your issues come from these areas, marketing, legal, human resources, operations, and of course, what I meant, what I meant, I shouldn't have said legal affairs. What I meant to say is current affairs, current affairs, correction, current affairs. Now, when we deal with current affairs, that's when we get into our, our, our fire. That's when we get into our menus. That's when we get into our diets, health, and nutrition. Now, when I say truth in menus, are you really eating the right portions that you see on the menus? Because many of us have gone into a restaurant or a hotel and we see that what's put on our plate is different from what you see in the menu. So you have to wonder when it comes to portion sizes, are you paying price for the amount of food that you're getting? Is there enough staff that's in that establishment to serve you? And if you're on a tour, do you, do you have enough tour guides? Personnel and labor are a problem. But in the end, wherever you are, are you safe from fires? Fire safety is big. And fire safety basically pertains to everything. If you have a lot of trash, that's a fire hazard. And that's outside. Now, if you're inside, are the buildings built the code? Now, I know many guests don't care about codes because they're on their travel mission so they can be stress-free. That's management's job to take care of the guests and they need to be worried about code. So your buildings need to be checked for fire safety. What do they say? Um, you, you, you always want to be safe. You leave in one piece, you wanna come back in one piece. Now, we're gonna move from the issues to current trends. Now, I will say this again, due to the fact that we had a health crisis dealing with COVID last year, many people had to stay home. Now it has gotten better this year. However, many travelers are exploring different ways they can travel. Now, here are some current trends that I see. Urban tourism, I call it the quick getaway or staycation. You have a number of individuals that aren't really going away from home, but they're just taking a, a, a quick vacation 
to go to the mountains, to go for a drive, even to go and eat. Now, a quick getaway is very good because depending on where you are, you're not spending your money on a lot of fuel and food, but you're getting enough just to get away to relieve stress. And I believe stress is a big killer here in America. And a staycation can give you some relief because you can take your mind off of your stressful job, dealing with your stressful home. But anyway, urban tourism is a current trend that's happening today. Then you have what we call nature or natural tourism or rural tourism. And when I talk about a breath of fresh air, if you're someone who lives in an urban area, you're basically leaving that area to go into the country. Again, the pace of the country is a little bit slower than it is in the city. However, within the country, the air is much better. You can breathe. When you're in a city, you have a lot more toxins because you have more cars, you have more people, you have more buildings. So a getaway to the country is very advantageous as well because you get peace. And again, peace is a stress reliever. Then there's domestic tourism. Domestic tourism is very, very good too. Now, domestic tourism is basically where you stay in your own country. Now, prior to COVID, you had to deal with TSA. And that can be very, very frustrating when you get on a plane and you can take so many bags. See, if you travel domestically within your own country, you don't have to worry about flying unless you're flying five or six hours away, but even driving. There are a lot of beautiful parts of the country that you can see. And if you're driving, you actually have the command, have the control, because you can stop and see anything you want. And you can do it as a family, do it as a couple, or do it as a single person. But in the end, short trips are very good. And if you have a passion for short trips, you need to take them. And that's gonna to continue to be a trend in the tourism industry. Then we talk about business. And what I see in this aspect is, instead of meeting somebody face-to-face, -face, their comp conference calls, their Zoom, there's Teams. So instead of leaving your own home and even going into the office, COVID allowed most of us to work remotely. And when you work remotely and you don't have to go into the office, you can still get work done. In fact, you're going to get work done at a faster pace. You're going to meet deadlines and your work is going to be even more quality because you don't have to deal with a lot of coworkers. Now, again, if you have a company that is two or 300 miles away, you don't have to travel there for a meeting. It's just one click away with the right meeting app. Again, like Zoom, like Teams, and for business travelers. It also keeps your costs down. But when it comes to hotels, the business travel or the business traveler does have an advantage because they can use all of their points. There are a lot of frequent flyer programs and usually business travelers bring in the revenue for a number of hotels. Even if you're just going there for a conference. But in the end, when we deal with business, regardless of how you do it, business will continue to go on and there will always be a need for business tourism.
because here in 2021, the trends from, from yesteryear are going to be much different, and we have to adjust to them. Now, if you're looking for some holistic health, a good trend that is here to stay for a while is wellness tourism. Now, ecotourism, this is one of my favorites because you deal with a lot of sustainability. I like green. Green is very peaceful. Green is clean. And when we deal with keeping everything green, this is when we deal with solid waste. This is when we deal with energy efficient lighting and heating and faucets and establishments. This is when we deal with recycling. Again, ecotourism deals with sustainable tourism. And from my humble opinion, it is very big. And it's a lot of business in ecotourism. And green is going to continue for a long time. And when it comes to sports, excitement and adrenaline, everybody likes to go to a good football game, basketball game. There are other entities out there like tennis matches. But for the most part, there are, numer there are numerous sports opportunities out there, not just professional, but college and high school as well. But sports tourism has always been here and it's going to continue to be here because sports generates a lot of income. During COVID, it lost its fair share because you could only have a certain amount of people in the facilities. Now, stadiums are packed. Then if you want some real culture, let's talk about cultural tourism, and you do get an above all experience. And I say that because you interact with other cultures. You listen to their language, you look at their customs, you hear their music, you see how they live, and you look at their food. Culturalism is education. And it's a current trend because in college, many of us are told to take a foreign language. You see, when you understand culture outside your own, you're able to get along with different types of people. See, most of us are so used to being in our own little circles, we don't understand anything about how other cultures work, and this is where your prejudice takes place. But culturism creates diversity, and I have no problem with cultural tourism. That's why it is a trend of today. Food tourism. This is one of my favorites. Now, it's not exactly what you believe or think. When I talk about food tourism, I talk about events. Now, I did a paper on an event where a lot of Amish food is sold in Pennsylvania, in, Kut in, in Kutztown, Pennsylvania. Now, if you really want smell and flavors of foods, you have to go to the popcorn festival. They have it in Valparaiso, Indiana. You go to the Blueberry Festival in Plymouth, Indiana. You can go to the Indiana State Fair. Uh, you can go to farmer's markets. You can go to city and county fairs. Those have always been around and they will continue to be around. And when you go to different areas where you can taste food, again, you're going outside your culture because one thing that brings people together is food and music. And in this industry, because food is not just part of tourism, it's hospitality. 
when you see how other recipes are made and you taste other people's food or other cultures of food, you have an idea of how other cultures prepare food. And the same could go for you. Other cultures could see how you prepare food. But again, I always say food brings people together. Now, moving on to family tourism, although families are getting smaller, you have families who are traveling together. And it's very good, especially on the holidays. Cultural tourism, again, I said that before, this is, I put it in twice. You can link that to educational tourism. Look and learn. This is why colleges are encouraging studying abroad. Because particularly in the tourism industry, you're going to need to know different cultures if you're going to work in this industry or if you are going to move to another country. So in the end, when it comes to current trends in tourism, there's urban tourism, rural and nature tourism, domestic tourism, business tourism, wellness tourism, eco-tourism, sports tourism, cultural tourism, and of course, food, family, and educational tourism. Now, with all that being said, I'm going to break it down and talk about where do we go from here. So when I look at future trends of tourism, I see more shopping online. I see more extended reach in less developed countries, improved security of personal information. And that's very important because you have a lot of hackers or trying to get your information so they can scam you for money. It's a big crime. And this is why cybersecurity is going to be part of improving security. Also, robotic labor sources. This is one that I see is already happening in Japan where some hotels are using robots to do the work. Now, it's problematic because it eliminates the human element. However, when you have robots doing the work, you don't have to pay health insurance, retirement, and you don't have to pay a salary. The robot only has to be maintained and you can program that robot to do anything you want it to do. And then you have voice activated reservation systems. Then you have improved navigation for rental cars. Also, it's going to be more comprehensive branding campaigns for large and small operators. Virtual online customer communication. It's also going to be just in time seats, rooms, and car inventories. And that's basically going to be your entertainment in your cars, which there's already video in your cars now. In fact, if you really want to look at something, there are a lot of apps on your telephone. Then there's going to be an electronic travel agent, blended hybrid accommodations, global anti-terrorist microchip security systems, very important because of 9-11, now we have Homeland Security and we have to make sure that we can alleviate terrorism because when you have big events, you're gonna have a lot of tourism. I remember back in 1996 in Atlanta, they had an individual that set off a bomb and one person was killed in Boston, Boston Marathon. That also happened. Very important that we keep security tight. And part of tourism is going to be next year for the 2022 Olympics. But when you have good security, 
your guest will feel secure and they'll be able to continue to have a good time. Because again, there's a motivation for traveling and that motivation is to relieve stress. Also, getting more in the foods. There are gonna be more nutritional fast food offerings. In fact, I see more and more fast food operations putting calories on their menus and they're putting calories on their computer menus. More emphasis on ecotourism. Also improve customer relationship marketing information. And overall, this is why you're gonna see a bright future for tourism. You can have early retirement, shorter work weeks, longer lifespans, greater disposable incomes, greater mobilities, and of course, families are getting smaller. And again, I looked at this information, took my own experience, and I also did some research, but overall, when it comes to the tourism industry, it's not going anywhere. It's going to continue to get better. And I thank you for listening to this presentation. Once again, my name is Leon Jones. If you have any questions, you can also put them on to my YouTube channel as well, because this presentation is going on to my YouTube channel and LinkedIn for the reasons, keep all the information from my own portfolio. And I thank you, Professor, for allowing me to give this presentation on current trends and issues in the tourism industry.